Our lives require failure. Like our lungs require oxygen. And when I find the world around me lacking in the resources that I need, it's because in so many ways I have forgotten to breathe, to step out my walls of comfort and breathe in lessons waiting to be taught by the greatest of teachers, life. Life, the unpredictable and often unremarkable miracle. The book that reveals itself through experience, that tells tales only in hindsight. Our world is a book in which we choose our own ending, and so we must fail. Because failing means living, and we were meant to live. We must fail because every failure is the mark of a poet. An artist or an author bringing the story one step closer to its resolution, continually walking up to a blank wall and making a mark, a single trivial mark, a mark that's misunderstood at best, but lightly scoffed at, ridiculed. But each mark gives meaning to the one before it. These marks they become chapters. Become narrative shifts, become stories. Every failure you throw against this wall becomes part of a mural. It's an element of beauty before the work can even be deemed beautiful. Yet we continually misunderstand. When you hang your head in disappointment, when you see only the smudge of paint you threw against that wall, you are oblivious. To the fact that you're making something meaningful, so here is my challenge to you: exactly where you need to be. I was in the car recently with my sister Allie, her girlfriend Alex, and her girlfriend's dad Jeremy. We were on our way to dinner in Naples, Florida, simultaneously、uh, driving and kind of looking through different places to eat. And no one really knew the area well, right? So、uh, we get to the point where we're pretty sure we have a spot we want to go picked out. When Alex suddenly looks up her phone and says to her dad, "You know, it looks like the place we're going tonight is、uh, a little fancy." And so, for context, right? They're both from London. Their accents make this one million times better.、Uh, and he hears her. He looks back over at her and says,、uh, "Well, we deserve fancy, don't we, Doc?" And I'm like, oh my god, you guys are、uh, a real life movie and don't even know.、That. I thought it was just such a beautiful thing. Moments like that are everything. Reminders to、uh, immerse ourselves in the moment, in what matters, with the people that matter. This, of course, wasn't about the restaurant, but how evident it was that he was grateful to be there. I remember. Seeing a quote that said, "If you can't find joy in a cup of coffee, you certainly won't find it in a yacht." So, how's that for perspective? You know, it's the little things that hold the value, the ones that become the big things. And while our eyes are fixated on mountain tops, life is about the climb. Or, as it's put in another anecdote, we live not for the destination, but for the journey. And see, this is a very timely topic for me.、Uh, I woke up today having hit the milestone, 500,000 subscribers on YouTube, which has、uh, honestly been a goal of mine since I started doing this in 2014. I woke up so excited, so happy, so grateful for every single view, for every person that stumbled upon my message and saw somewhere in my journey a little piece of their own. But as、uh, today's gone on, it's been interesting. I found myself more and more unsure how I feel, because on one hand, it is representative of that exact thing—the journey, the ride. I feel like the luckiest human alive, with friends and family that have、uh, truly carried me through the valleys of life. And if anything, milestones like these honor them in the light they bring to the world. 
But on the other hand, a part of me couldn't help thinking, oh, okay, I guess one million is next. And trust me, I wish that wasn't true, but it is. I remember reading in the Almanac of Naval Ravikant a passage where he said, uh, essentially that the excitement of acquisition isn't in the thing we're acquiring, it's in the anticipation of it, the buildup. I believe he used the example of a Ferrari, implying that waiting for it was the fun. That's the rush. Getting it is just kind of, okay, now I have a Ferrari. And that's what makes these benchmarks we create so interesting. They're everything and nothing simultaneously. Reminders that finish lines aren't of value for their own sake. They're valuable because they remind you of the race you ran, the highs you cherished, and the lows you fought through. Life ebbs and it flows, and I'm continuously fascinated by its duality, by the overlap we need to live in, how two things can be true at once and so often are. I can sit here today and tell you, I think in a lot of ways, societally, we've gotten a little soft, too soft, that we often fail to understand that the road to what we want runs through the very landscape that will push us to be more than we've ever been. That we have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Or that the beauty of being human is that we can make sacrifices now for that which we desire in the future. All this, as far as I'm concerned, is absolutely unequivocally true. But there's also the existential question. Yeah, but for what? If you're not living, cherishing the little things, finding the miraculous in something as small as a cup of coffee, then when, when, darling, will you let yourself deserve fancy? Now, I'm not gonna claim I have all the answers. I do not. But if my time on this planet is a test case, well, here's what it show me. When life is all about the destination, the 500K milestones, the money, the growth, the status, the world becomes hollow, and man, does it hollow out fast. Things mean less. And while sure, they're often a valuable direction to point the compass, they are not life. And on the contrary, when it's all play and no direction, all wandering and no learning, all chaos and no building, that subsequent meaninglessness emerges again. It's in balancing the two. Life is incredible, but only to those who make a point to see it as so. God, is that easy not to do? It blows my mind how easy it is to miss the things that are most important. That's what this day has taught me. The finish lines and 500,000 milestones, though few and far between, are a celebration. But they do not point to themselves. They point to the little things. They point to the people. They point to the times you were walking through hell and kept walking. They point to the sunrises, sunsets, and times you sat back and thought, wow, am I lucky. After all, there's a reason the view from the top points right back down to the world below. Shines a spotlight on the very ascent you just endured as if highlighting what really matters, what life is really about. And so today, by default, a new ship has left the port towards a new horizon. Compass aimed at, let's say, one million. Why not? But it's essential to remember that that is the North Star that guides the journey. It is not everything. I challenge you to point your compass accordingly to whatever it is in your world that matters, that excites you, that lifts you up. And when you arrive, let it be not the goal in and of itself, but a celebration of the joy, the happiness contained along the way, the fact that you did look around and smile, 
did cherish those sunsets, sips of coffee, that you treated yourself to fancy and that you paused every now and then to say to yourself. I read something this morning that said at some point in your childhood, you and your friends went outside to play together for the last time and nobody knew it. It seems to me that many of life's last times elude us. We aren't aware of the pages turning or chapters ending. The phases of life essentially blend into each other, one fading into the next. In fact, we don't even realize the extent to which things have changed until we peer back over our shoulders. See, life is happening to us now. While we plan, hope, and pray for better days, 99.99% of life consists of the time that exists between the so-called pivotal life events. The average, the ordinary, the things that we pay no mind to. So what's the relevance? Why does this matter? Well, because the sun coming up in the morning is life. Pouring your coffee is life. Small talk with your loved ones is life. The art you're creating, music you're listening to, the workouts at the gym, they are life. And not in a so you better be grateful or else kind of way, but in a if you don't understand this, contentment will be incredibly hard to capture kind of way. I have a lot of favorite quotes, but this one tops them all. Character Andy Bernard from The Office, he says in an episode, I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've actually left them. And I can't get over how that statement proves itself to be true repeatedly, over and over again, how it's not until we peer over our shoulders that we realized how lucky we were, how much fun we had, how much the time meant. I recently went to a wedding uh, for one of my best friends from childhood. And funny enough, we only lived in the same state for four years, from fourth grade to eighth grade, uh, before I moved across the country to Massachusetts. And I thought, um, as I flew to the wedding, you know what, I should post a picture of us as kids together, you know, say congrats. And I quickly realized on the plane ride that I don't think we have any, right? It's essentially only memories. It's the stories that we still to this day laugh about, those events that shaped our childhoods, uh, the things kids go through that change the way we look at the world. And uh, all that happens so fast. I think it remains so precious because we were so fully immersed in it. It was such a simple time, pivotal, and gone in a snap. I had no idea it would mean anything 20 years later, but that's life. It seems to go by in an instant, which is why I think we need to find that sweet spot. Respect for the duality between sometimes sacrificing the present for a better future, an ability that makes humans remarkable creatures, and also enjoying and realizing how precious the ride how beautiful the now. Whether the current season is ideal, a struggle, or in between, to feel something at all in its own unique way is a miracle. And if we look, we'll find that there is good here. There's growth here. There are moments that you'll look back on and smile at knowing that they shaped you and played a role in who you are becoming. So the point is, as we make our way through life, it's highs and lows. Perhaps look around and make an effort to see the beauty in the journey. Understand that nothing is forever. The people you talk to, places you go, the things you do, they will all dissipate. And while sure the now may not be perfect, and in some cases even a stepping stone along the way to a better, wiser, stronger you, the idea shouldn't be to long for the enjoyable part, but to realize you are in it. To know that some of these things we take for granted 
will be missed when they're gone. Let's not fall into the trap of letting life go by while we waited for it to begin. Let's, as Andy Bernard stated, remember that the good old days are right now and embrace today as the truly incredible gift, opportunity, and finite ride that it is. What's the difference between simple and easy? Well, simple is straightforward, uncomplicated. Easy, on the other hand, means achieved without great effort. The difference between those two words is subtle, but essential to understand. One deals with the complexity of an outcome. The other, your will and determination to achieve that outcome. Becoming who you most want to be is simple, but becoming who you most want to be is not easy. Just like walking is simple, yet hiking up a mountain is not easy. The procedure didn't change, the context did. So let's talk about context. Let's talk about this cyclical nature of growth because it's not that most people can't. It's that most people won't. It's not that most people don't get how. It's that they don't have a strong enough why. The path is laid out before you. You just have to be willing to walk down it. Will you? Step one, realize there's more out there. It's not that what you're doing now isn't amazing. It's just that yesterday's act of courage is now today's status quo. What was the spectacular is now the mundane. What was once the ceiling you had to jump to touch is now the floor you walk on. So at the very least, it prompts you to ask, well, what's next? Simple. Not easy. Step two, the acquisition of courage. Yesterday's courage was a fight. It took a lot out of you, and it's ultimately what got you here. But it dropped you at the curb, it waved goodbye and went on its merry way, and here you are. You can stay here. A lot of people do. You can reminisce of the glory days, the old path, yesterday's triumphs. Or... You can do that perpetually uncomfortable exercise of vulnerability. Stepping into tomorrow's unknown, reminding yourself that life's greatest rewards have a hefty price tag, and that price is discomfort. But I've already played this game, one might think. No, what you did was learn the rules. Now it's time to apply them to a new setting, and around goes the merry-go-round. It might seem like a replication, from the horizontal, but here's the secret. You can't see the vertical. You have yet to look down and see your ascent, see what you're becoming. Just by staying on, holding tight, just by believing in yourself enough to begin again, you are fanning those tiny flames of courage in your soul that wait to be spread like a wildfire. Simple, but not easy. Step three, mistakes. Now, of course, it's not the mistakes themselves you fear. It's what you think those mistakes will mean. Ridicule, embarrassment, lack of direction or identity, losing what you have, but here's the catch. When you realize the upside is greater than the downside, you liberate yourself. When you realize there's more to gain, than to lose, your potential for greatness is born. How does one act on this? Mistakes, by making mistakes, by injecting yourself into the turbulence of progress. Our biology has not yet learned that the uncomfortable thing is the right thing, and that's why you get resistance, that's why it hurts. 
and it's why few people will accomplish what you will. When it comes to your climb, every day is opposite day. When they run out, you're running in. When they play safe, you play for the victory. To become who you might be, you must learn how to get there. Mistakes are your curriculum. Simple, but not easy. Step four, trust yourself. Okay, sure, no problem, easy. Well, yeah, it's easy when you're getting what you want. But evolution takes time, and there's nothing quite like giving and giving and giving and not getting. There's nothing quite like stepping up to the plate again and again and again and bringing no runners home. So how does one find the strength to continue walking up to the batter's box? Well, growth is exponential, and those swings and misses matter. The infield singles matter. Everything matters because it's all chiseling your future self out of stone. Nothing is dependent on the next at bat as much as all at bats in the aggregate. That's why success is so often considered to be sheer will, dependent not on the home run, but on the discipline, the self-belief to keep walking up to the plate. Repetition and adjustment. Repetition and adjustment. Repeat and refine, repeat, refine. Those are the materials from which all things are made. Simple, but not easy. And then we have the finale. The ending, step five. Celebrate and adjust. At some point, you'll be able to look over your shoulder and notice something that perhaps you hadn't before, space. Space between where you are and where you started. It's not sudden, but gradual. And undoubtedly, with enough persistence, it will emerge. These moments, they are precious. They are times to acknowledge what you've accomplished, the sacrifices you have made. They are life's way of reminding you what you are building and who you are becoming. It's a time of celebration. Every little win means something. Every small victory matters, so relish it. And then transform it. Normalize it. Recognize that that mountaintop is your foundation now. Your starting point has changed and so have you, which means so have your expectations. With an increase in ability comes an upgrade to what's possible, what's expected. And look at that. We have arrived at a new step one. Realize there is more. This is the process for capturing that which life has to offer. If you can fall in love with that, appreciate it, respect it, while simultaneously understanding it's not scary, it's dependent entirely on your ability to push forward. If you can understand that, there is nothing you can't do. Nowhere you can't go. Simple, yes, easy, no. But you're not in this for easy. You're in it for the journey, the growth, the adventure. You're in it because it's not easy. You'll see in time, as will the world, that this decision to endure was simply the best one you ever made.